Hi, everyone. Thanks for dropping in and uh, special gratitude for folks that are able to be here on the Zoom. It's so sweet to see faces and to uh, feel like we're in circle in community together um, in all the ways that it shows up and also opening our awareness to those of you that are practicing with us and sharing the practice after the fact um, on YouTube. So thank you for dropping in there as well. Mm. Uh, every week as I keep showing up over these years <laughs> to uh, yeah, just showing up to see what's what's might be helpful to offer but it, especially of late it's interesting I'm just noticing as I'm saying that you know especially of late, that um, that's also not the case because our world is uh, always in suffering and in war and oppression and uh, violence. And so, you know, as I listen to um, sometimes older Dharma talks and, and they they often would, will say, well, especially right now, things are really bad right now. It's like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> How many times is it especially like, like now? So, um, as I show up here, I'm like, what, how do we keep showing up in such heartache and uh, awareness of the infinite ways of um, dukkha, of suffering, and of um, oppression? And um, one of the things that's been very inspiring uh, in how to be in the world and how to be with this inner world, this heart, body, mind, how it is, are the um, the teachings of the the three tenets of the Zen peacemakers, and huge, huge caveat here. Zen is not my lineage. I'm not a Zen teacher, and it's um, this isn't a practice I've personally been taught. Just reading about it and very inspired, and it's helped me personally. And it is taught as a lay practice and taught to non-Zen practitioners. Um, so I'm in no way representing the breadth of these teachings, which are so good <laughs> um i really encourage you to check out the link that'll be low be below in this uh youtube recording and it's here in the zoom chat for the zen Pe peacemakers group um to read about the <sighs> profound breath breadth width of uh action, wise action, peacemaking in the world that um, that they've done and are continuing to do. So this was begun in 1994 by um, Roshi Bernie Glassman and his second wife at the time, Sandra Jishu Holmes. Um, Yeah, do take a moment to check out the website and look at the amazing mm, different forms of offerings that have come from, from these intentions and from this core group of Zen teachers. Um, so it came about from what what they share on their site by this it's a, a merging and interconnectedness of spiritual training with 
social action. And this is what the Dharma is. It, you know, we do this practice for, for how we are in the world. It's not in isolation. Sharon Salzberg says this all the time. How does she say it? Um, like meditation is not enough. It's really, so we, we know the whole middle path, eightfold path is about wise speech, wise livelihood, wise action, wise, um, you know, uh, how we are in the world. Just letting someone in here. And uh, so interconnectedness of spiritual training and social action, which is really just naming the Dharma because they already are interconnected, these things. But it's very intentional through the Zen peacemakers and their actions. Uh, so one of the things, I'll just mention a few of them briefly because each one is huge. But in 1980, even before Zen peacemakers, uh, Roshi Bernie Glassman um, began the Grayston, Grayston Bakery, which is still operating 35 years later, um, probably more than that now, in the Bronx and then later in Yonkers, and that employed people with no questions asked, no questions about their previous work history, their incarceration history, um, homelessness, uh, language barriers, etc. And yeah, and then uh, this core group of teachers um, created the Zen Peacemaker Order, and they did a retreat at Auschwitz um, Birkenau. Profound uh, bearing witness retreat um, and developed a model of uh, um, peacemaker circles rather than a hierarchy like Indra's web is interconnected circles of um, being in the world. Beautiful, incredible work. So please do um, check it out even just to get familiarized with some of these offerings. So the, the Zen peacemakers, Bernie uh, had the insight and, and coalesced these three tenets of Zen peacemakers that are very accessible and very profound and transformative. The first one is not knowing. <laughs> this is uh, not easy for some of us and so important in a time of such a, in a time, there I said it again, all the time, uh, such a division and uh, side taking and polarizing and dualism uh, to really cultivate the absolute truth of not knowing. First of all, not knowing because everything is in continuous flux, continuous flow. We know this as a Nietzsche impermanence. All things are in a constant state of flow. So how can we possibly be so certain, so knowing about how things are and how they're going to be and how they should be? Doesn't make sense. So not knowing also includes some willingness, the courage to set aside fixed views. This really re requires uh, curiosity and showing up um, in a place of, yeah, I really don't know what it's like for you. I really want to know. Let me set aside my fixed projections 
and open to hearing. The other aspect of not knowing, the other aspect that is part of not knowing is when we're able to step into the truth of not knowing, this aligns us with boundless interconnectedness. It, it creates a sense of connection when we are in a place of not knowing, when we're in relationship with ourselves, with others, with the world, um, we're immediately connected and aware of that connection, which already is, and also compassion. There, there's an openness and a curiosity to really hear and, um, yeah. Which brings us to the next tenet, which is bearing witness. So first is not knowing, the second is bearing witness. Bearing witness to the 10,000 joys and 10,000 sufferings, to the all the thoughts, feelings, sensations in our own, our own heart, body, mind, and in each other and the world the to be able to show up for all of it what's it called the full full catastrophe yeah um and and in bearing witness we're present in the um arising and passing of joys and sorrows in a in a capacity of spaciousness not in a contracted knowing and pushing or pulling wanting not wanting but with that not knowing can give us the capacity of spacious awareness where we can bear witness to what's coming and going in that capacity of bearing witness we we have the capacity to know what is being suppressed and what's being fueled what what um suffering am i not willing to bear witness to um or what is being clung to what joys are being clung to um, or also suppressed. So bearing witness allows us the capacity to know to know when pushing and pulling is here and gives us this capacity to meet even the most painful circumstances. This is always possible. The third tenet is taking action. And the taking action is, is the caring, compassionate response to, to what is present in, in bearing witness. And uh, there's kind of two aspects to this. One is trust sada faith that when we're showing up in the capacity of not knowing and bearing witness wise response will show itself will knowing will be there of how to respond to ourselves to each other um and so there's kind of this spontane spontaneity that's possible when when we're in these first two tenets of not knowing and bearing witness. Um, and part of taking action is often taking a step back 
to have that pause to discern what's happening in our inner world and what's happening in the outer world. So this, this pause, um, stepping back, discernment uh, gives us time to respond rather than react. So there's less reactivity. This capacity to connect with a sense of centeredness and presence. And taking action, we, we never know what the right response is. Um, and it might be something uh, that, as simple as continuing to practice, not knowing and bearing witness. That's a caring action. It might be practicing metta, loving kindness. It might be practicing compassion. And compassion, as, as you may know, is known as and is taught as a response to suffering. It's a call to respond and action. A uh, a taking action might be saying no. That might be the wise response. It might, it, it's boundless. It could, I'm not even going to start, don't start trying to list actions. Endless, boundless. But it comes from not knowing and bearing witness. These, these are all interconnected and work together. So to, to, be able to show up with not knowing and curiosity, openness, not holding to fixed views, uh, trust that when we do these, not knowing and bearing witness, that wise response will show. And these are really helpful to just work with in your daily life. Just as I'm going about doing a day, not knowing, bearing witness, like it just, you can just memorize these three and see, see how it enlivens awareness, interconnectedness, compassion, for self and others and all beings. I mean, the, it, it, I, I'm, <laughs> sorry, don't do that. Uh, these things are taught like on long retreats, like these are big. And it's also possible to just take it on and use it in your meditation practice, in your daily life and in your social action your response to the world um yeah so we just want to acknowledge that this is just a super light introduction to very profound practice hmm. yeah i think that's all um and so we're going to practice with these in our meditation practice i find it helpful as a meditation practice so let's check it out. So adjust your posture, your lighting, if you want to turn away from the computer, if you want to turn off lights, if you um, need to adjust your temperature or your posture, take some time to do that. I like taking some time to settle into posture, see if you need any other movements or stretch or touch.
the invitation to take any sighing or relaxing or deepening breaths that might be helpful for you. It can be both energizing and relaxing. And then begin to feel your bones, the weight of the bones, hardness, solidity, this beautiful structure holding you in your posture. so that you can let the flesh soften and drape and rest over that form. Inviting ease across the muscles of the face. And through the neck and shoulders. Let the bones drop. Feel the weight of the shoulders down through the elbows and into relaxed hands. See if a few slightly deeper breaths helps to soften the area of the heart center. Just feeling some movement there. And then inviting that breath awareness to drop towards the belly and softening, moving, releasing as much as possible. As the upper body relaxes, perhaps feeling more weightedness and groundedness presence through the pelvis, legs, feet. And then as if there's a, a sphere of awareness, like a, like a bubble or sphere around your whole body. Just aware of the whole body in whatever posture you're in, sitting or reclining or standing. And then just drop into this sphere of awareness, not knowing. How many ideas do we have about who we are and how we are? What's it like right in this moment to not know and just show up? Oh, these sensations are here. These 
sounds coming and going, thoughts coming and going, sensations coming and going. This continuous flux, and we don't really know how the next moment is going to be. Setting aside our fixed view of this self. And we'll rest together in awake awareness for a few minutes in silence with this curious awake not knowing. What sensations, thoughts, What's it like to be in this body, heart, mind? Moment by moment. Without any fixed views of who or what you are. And in this space of curious, awake awareness that's open and receptive, we can now begin to practice with the second tenet of bearing witness. Bearing witness 
to whatever is arising and passing in this spacious awareness, joys and sorrows, sensations, desires, aversions, doubts, grief, etc. And trust in your capacity to meet even the most painful circumstances in their true nature of arising and passing. in this sphere of awake awareness, just floating in the question, what's here that wants to be known, that wants me to bear witness to? And already this practice of not knowing and bearing witness is a very, very compassionate practice to open to meeting ourselves and the world in this way. The third tenet is taking action. So from bearing witness to ourselves, there may have arisen a spontaneous response or sense of something needed or taking some time to discern, to step back a little bit from any story that we're hooked into, regaining our center stepping out of reactivity and responding. So it may be a touch, the heart, or 
opening eyes or movement. It might be offering some meta phrases or self-compassion. May I be steady with this difficulty. May I be gentle with myself. Or it might be a, a commitment, an intention to an action or response after the meditation. Resting, saying no, saying yes. Is there any action that feels like a natural response to bearing witness? Perhaps asking ourselves, what do you need, dear one? And in this last part of the practice, you might choose to continue in this way, just resting and not knowing and bearing witness, or open awareness, heart, mind to connect with an other, maybe a group of people, maybe someone in your close proximity, friend, family, community, that's experiencing difficulty, suffering. And see if you can practice in this container, not knowing. being aware of fixed views you may have and letting them be known. Uh, these are my fixed views. I'm gonna just set them aside and open. Maybe I don't know the whole picture for this person or these beings. Opening to this sense of boundless interconnectedness and compassion.
as is often said, not knowing is most intimate. And then allow yourself to reflect and open awareness, practicing in this container of meditation to bearing witness to this being, to their joys and sufferings, and trust in your capacity to meet even the most painful circumstances. And lastly, taking action. Take some time to take a step back and, and trust discernment, not from reactivity, but from your center. Is there a caring action that is needed? And that caring action might include, might be continuing in the practice of not knowing and bearing witness. Or there may be other responses possible. And then take a releasing breath and let go of these reflections and intentions. Feel the bones and the flesh and the ground center. And feel the effects of taking time to cultivate these peacemaking principles and practices. May all beings everywhere be safe and free from harm be cared for. May all beings everywhere know peace.
-hmm. Not sure how the sound of that bell came through. I did it twice because I didn't have that sound for musicians on the first time. So I hope that wasn't confusing, but um, so please check the link uh, down below for Zen Peacemakers and they offer amazing retreats and teachings and there's lots to explore there. Um, and if you're near the Greystone Bakery, check that out. I'm sure, I'm sure some of you have probably been there. I know you have. Mm, so I hope there's something uh, supportive for you in that practice uh, to be with ourselves and each other, how, how it is. Thanks for joining us.